Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Brad Shishin here, and welcome back to my Space Engineers update video. Now this will be a quick overview of the update. I will be doing an experimental video in the coming few days once I get a chance to actually play around with the update myself for a little bit longer than 5 to 10 minutes. And this update came out yesterday, however I wasn't able to do a video on an ASAP. But I thought if anyone wasn't in the loop, I would give you guys a quick run through on what was added and basically how they function. So we have automated turrets, wheels, decoy blocks and missile launchers for the most part of the update. So firstly let me show you guys the wheels down here. Now wheels come in three sizes, 1x1, one 2x2 one, two two, and 3x3s. Three this is a 2x2 two two and this is a 3x3 three three. and however over here we have a 3x3 three three and a 3x3. Three three. Now tires function how basically how you think they would. They allow for your vehicle to roll along the ground. Now these are connected via motors and we recommend having the motors off and just using the thrusters for acceleration and deceleration. So I will show you guys that here right now. So if I turn my HUD on you guys can see that if I push forward with W you can see it's a little bit jumpy here and there and I kind of find that a little bit weird. I think that's maybe because the tires or the wheels still need a little work before they're actually 100% functioning. But for now, this is how they work. They don't emit as many sparks as they as as we thought they would have, but nonetheless, these seem to function quite well. So I've built like a little teeny course here just to kind of demonstrate how the wheels work and how they kind of function going over different uh, types of terrain. Nonetheless, they seem to function very much how people would think they would, which is nice. And now we have wheels, so we can have proper buggies instead of having to build armor blocked wheels to get everything done. Let me see if I can actually drive through the ship over here that I parked, just because I felt like it. Like I said, I do apologize for this video being a little bit late. Uh, I've had a, a lot of other stuff to, to do and a lot of other stuff on my mind. And I did the other tutorial video for you guys uh, anyway. There we are, we are now coming up to the ship and we should be all good. So like I said, these tires just seem to function quite well. They do have other purposes. Like I said, there was a 1x1 one one tire that I haven't actually used because it's not really used for uh, ground-like vehicles. And I'll show you what I mean uh, right now, actually. Let me give it this little light here. And I will come out the front and I will put a motor on it if I still have the motors. Where are they? There they are. And the wheels are down here, if you were wondering. Now, if I put the motors on here followed by the wheels, you can see that it isn't very big, obviously it's a one by one but it can't be utilized for an actual vehicle itself, so if you had this sitting along the ground it wouldn't actually move the vehicle in any way other than what your thrusters would, thrusters would naturally do. So I'm going to be experimenting with that to see exactly what I can actually do with the one by one wheel. I know you can probably do stuff like rails and whatnot. I think that would make everything a little more smoother. And hell, I might actually revisit the wheels I did. However, not the wheels, the rail system I did a long, long time ago. Actually, it does say I could do put down a one by one wheel here, which is a little bit weird. But nonetheless, I mean, ping pong. No, 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 no not ping pong. Pinball. We need to make pinball. I'm gonna make pinball. Oh no, no, I said it. No. Oh well. Someone can get onto that, or I'll get onto that. I'll try and see if I can make pinball in Space Nine Engineers. Oh, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Do we have balls? That sounds weird. Um, but we do have ore that we can shoot out. Oh, wow, we have ore that we can actually shoot out through a connector. And my phone goes off. I don't know why it's going off now of all damn times. I also have an email. Is it an email? It is an email. Yes, it is. GOG Gaming. Um... Yeah, okay, I'm going to try making a pinball machine in Space Engineers. No one jump on that. Let me do that first. Um, okay, so I will show you guys the 3x3 to see if that functions any different to the 2x2s. Honestly, there's not much difference. I mean, a bigger wheelbase allows for kind of more terrain coverage or whatnot. Now, this thing could probably flip upside down if I try to flip it. I don't know how exactly I will be able to do that unless I could fly upwards and... No, I couldn't actually get enough air then. As you guys can see, you have to use artificial mass. Or you could use the whole landing gear and the stone thing to kind of keep it down. Now, how you would transport these inside of uh, ships, I actually don't know. Because 
unless you have some sort of landing gear, I'm guessing you'd have landing gears on the front and back or something, and you kind of like lock it up against the wall. Maybe that's how it'll work. And by the way, I'm driving like a complete reckless idiot here, just so, so I can actually show the wheels off. Um, yeah, there we go. It still functions whilst being upside down, which is cool. Yep, there we go. We're still, we're still driving an upside down car. Perfect. I can't actually flip it if, if I wanted to. Anyways, let's move on to the next thing. I'm glad I came up with a decent idea to do it with the wheels and that now. Um, so this is the automated turrets. Now please note that they've only added the Gatlin turrets and the interior turrets. The missile turrets, however, do not function just yet. But nonetheless, these are cool enough on their own. So you can actually color them, which is really nice. I quite like that, that they are now allowing us to color a lot more things. I kind of wish that we could color refineries and whatnot. Uh, but nonetheless, like I said, this is uh, pretty cool in itself. So these have a variable range, and these do have a conveyor button down the... Oh, sorry, a conveyor system down the bottom that can allow them to be connected up to a conveyor system. And as you guys see here, they can actually carry those NATO containers. But if I go on to this side over here, they have, like I said before, variable range, allowing you to set these up to 800 meters. If you don't know how far away 800 meters are, I've got a little line here demonstrating that for you. So there was actually a beacon. Here's the beacon here that says turret distance, just so you know, it is 800 meters. And this red line here is what is in range of the actual firing mechanism. So we're going to fly all the way along here, going all the way out here to the 800 meter mark which is where the yellow line starts so this is quite the distance away if you were to have a turret shooting at you you most like well sorry if you were coming across an enemy ship you most likely wouldn't know that they had a turret if they had it set to 800 meters until you started encountering fire now the counterbalance of this is that the turrets themselves aren't exactly that strong at least from what i've encountered they have a hard time actually destroying stuff but, what did the Taurus actually shoot at? They shoot at meteor showers and the decoy blocks. And the decoy blocks are found here, right next to the warheads. Now, these are very, very interesting. They don't use any power, but they do attract the Taurus, like said. So, my guess is you could probably try to drop them out of your ship at this flare, so you'd have to find a way to turn them off first until you actually need them. Or you can send in scrap ships to your enemies to see if they do actually have any base mechanics that will actually shoot at them. So I've put it here, you guys can see that they all target it like that, and then they all fire at it until it is destroyed. Now you're probably wondering what the yellow zone is. Now the yellow zone is out of out of their firing range, but it's not out of their targeting range. I'm guessing that so it gives them a little bit of time in advance to uh, line up their shots. So if I stick it out here, you can see that they do actually target it, but they won't shoot it. Obviously the our uh, beam of laser is green, so we'll remove it and we'll put it just up here. You can see, still green, but if I put it here, one of them can fire. I, I didn't actually, they didn't have this in when the actual update came out, because I have done this video quite a few times, it's just, it wasn't good enough for me to actually publish. So let me just put this back here again, just so I can quickly reference what I was talking to you about. The lasers were completely red yesterday, but now it seems like when they are idle or when they are aiming at something it's green when they are firing it is red and you can see that change uh, just there so that, there we go that is the automated turrets they do have the interior turrets as well which I will place down and show you guys they're the little teeny adorable turrets I pointed out to you yesterday now I don't know if they fire at people like I said there isn't the faction system in the game anymore that, that's been temporarily removed as far as I can as far as I know, you can't access it via the control panel or terminal anymore. So I'm hoping to see the faction system return sometime soon so that these turrets can then shoot enemy faction ships instead of your own. Um, here we, yeah, let me just put down the interior turret for you guys. Here we go, interior turret. Put this little guy down here. Oh, I shall cute. And let me see what range, excuse me, turret. Let me see what range he has. He has a 800 meter radius as well? Jesus thing. <laughs> I want to see um, I want to see how much damage this can do as opposed to a Gatlin turret. Because everyone's curious about that, right? So I'll put him a little bit ahead of these so that it'll be the only one firing. And we'll see if it can actually take out a Deku block in the same amount of time as the other ones can. 
So we did witness one uh, Gatlin's heart firing before when it was right on the edge over here. So we'll put the deco block out here to see the little teeny turret shooting at it and see if it actually destroy it in about the same time. It should go about three, two, there we go. Yeah, so it basically does the same amount of damage. A Gatlin's heart does the same amount of damage as an interior turret. Surprise, surprise. I'm guessing that's probably because the numbers still need a bit of tweaking. But I honestly think that the interior turret should not be as powerful or have enough range as the outside Gatlin turrets. I think the Gatlin turrets should be a little bit more powerful. And if you actually want to know how much damage they do, let me get rid of all the turrets here other than one of them. And I will show you how the amount of damage it does against a wall. Now normally these aren't meant to be shooting through your ship, but be warned that they have the tendency to actually try to shoot around the edges when a meteor is flying by. So let me put a little wall up here just to demonstrate really quickly. Now, like I said, there has been an apparent update since yesterday's big update, so um, my guess is that is there was some sort of fixes and whatnot. But let me put this here and then I'll put the deco block behind it. Now, technically it shouldn't shoot at it because it is behind the, this wall here, but I think because the wall itself is connected to the ship, it counts as its own ship which is re really weird I'll just show you I'll put, put it here and as you guys can see it is trying to shoot at it and you can see that it is trying to get through the wall until it's going to push it out into about a one block uh, far back you see this really weird morphing going on here now I think this is a bug I think if quite a few people have said that this is a bug normally it would have gotten through by now but it seems like it uh, seems like it isn't actually going through so this is light armor, by the way, if I didn't already make that clear. Eventually, it should actually punch through, but apparently not. So let's get rid of the decoy block here. There we go. And let's actually repair this thing. Jeez, that's weird. Um, That was very, very messy looking. So there we go. And let me put down heavy armor and see just about how long it'll take for us to go through that. I really do like what these developers do in the game. They they are putting a lot of time and effort into it, which, which I thank them for. So, there we go. We have that there, and we have... There we go. Should be about the same instance, and we will see it slowly, slowly denting it. Almost to the point where it's going to do the exact same thing as a light arm, where it's going to do the weird kind of uh, invertedness. But other than that, I don't think it'll probably go through. Now, I think, the, like I said, the interior does the same amount of damage, but I think there will be tweaks in the future to counteract or to fix that. Like I said, I think that the interior tote should have a lot less range, maybe a maximum of 800, and it would only do a uh, similar amount of damage as a uh, machine gun. The What was this called, actually? An automatic rifle. Sorry. I feel that these should do a little bit more damage towards ships, because as I have shown you, it doesn't really punish through any sort of armor other than just denting it. So, I mean, you're probably going to do a lot of rewelding just to make everything flat again. But other than that, there's not going to be much progress made at all uh, via the turrets. So, the next thing is missile launches. Now, like I said, the missile turrets weren't enabled. However, missile launches were. Now, these function very much like the small ship missile launches. And even the damage seems to be almost identical. So over here I've co covered this red ship in missile launches. Now I did fire this at that and it lagged out my PC. So I'm going to be removing just a few of these just to make it a little bit smoother for the demonstration purposes. And as I said, they do almost identical damage to the missile launches of these small ships. Now I don't know if this will stay like that. Uh, this might just be a testing build right now that we're currently using. But nonetheless, I hope that I see some more changes towards these missile launches and the turrets themselves in terms of damage and whatnot as well. So let me get inside the ship, or get inside the seat I put on top of the ship here. And I will end this video by bombarding the other red ship. So if you guys enjoyed this video, there's a little quick overview here. Like I said, I'll be doing an experimentation video in the coming few days where I mess around with the update and all its functionality to try and come up with something creative. Like I said, I might actually do a pinball machine if I can get it working and functioning. The only hard thing will probably be creating a ball of sorts, but I don't imagine that being too difficult. Nonetheless, thank you guys for watching and I 
We'll see you guys next time. Stay awesome, everyone. I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of freaking cool. <laughs> there we go, everyone. Oh, I love this game.